Hi everyone, in this project we're going to set up a Revit API project from scratch using Visual Studio Community. Okay, let's go. Uh, we use the Visual C Sharp Templates class library. Let's give it a name. Uh, Revit project. Call it whatever you want. Uh, we need to add the references to the Revit API. So we right click on references in the Solution Explorer, add reference, click browse, and it's under Program Files, Autodesk, Revit, and whichever version of Revit you're using. And we scroll down to Revit API. And we also need the Revit API UI. Add both of those DLLs. And we set those to not copy local. Make it easier. If we select them both under the properties, we set copy local to false. The reason we do that is if it's set to true, every time we debug or build the project, it will copy those DLLs into our output folder, as long as well as all of the DLLs that they reference, and it makes quite a mess. Uh, another convention that we use is to rename the class to command or application, depending on the type of project we're running. And in this case, it's command. And it should prompt us automatically to rename this class to command as well. So we say yes, and we can see now the file name and the class name are both, both say command. Uh, let's add some musings, so we don't have to type in the full namespace every time. Desk Revit dot attributes Revit Desk Revit Oops I need to help you if I could spell Revit Desk Revit D B and Auto Desk Revit UI. Okay, so let's get rid of this output. Going to add a couple of attributes to the class. One is the transaction mode. Uh, these are compulsory. Uh, so we're going to set that to manual. And the regeneration mode is also going to be manual. Okay. And as I said, we're going to implement a interface called iExternal. Let's get Visual Studio to do the work for us. If we hold control and press the period, it will give us these two options. Uh, and we're going to just do the first one, implement interface. That will automatically insert the required function for us method. Uh, this execute method uh, contains three parameters, external command data, which is the Revit instance that we're running the command in. This message is a string that we can pass back to Revit if there's an error. And the elements is a collection of elements in Revit uh, that we want to have selected when the command ends. So we don't need to use either of those two if there's no need. So we're going to use a task dialog to show a message task dialog show and it needs a title and the message is just going to be a simple hello revit and this function needs to have a return of type result so we're going to return result succeeded so you can see a couple of others there cancelled or failed so if there was an error you'd return a failed after setting the message. So this first is going to be succeed. Done. That's the entire project done. Um, now we need to tell, we can't just run it now. So if we say start, it will throw an error telling us that this is a type class library and cannot be started directly. So we need to do a couple of things now. 
first one is to tell Visual Studio what to do when we try and debug this project. So if we double click on properties, go to debug, and we're going to say we want you to start an external program. Revit. So we'll just browse to where do you have Revit installed? So there's that. And we also need to tell Revit when it starts what it needs to load. Uh, and we do that by creating a add-in manifest file. So if we right click on our project and say add new item. Now a, a, an add-in manifest is basically a, a, an XML file with a different extension. So we're going to call this um, my Revit project. That part's not, um, can be named whatever you want, but we generally use the same as a project name, so we know which one goes with which, and the extension is add-in. Okay, every add-in manifest requires an, a Revit add-ins tag. Case, case is important, capital R, capital A, capital I. And inside the Revit add-ins tag, we have one or more add-in tags. In this case, our add-in is of type command. There are, there are only two types, there's command and application. Okay, the command needs a text tag, which is the text that will appear on the button inside Revit. So Revit add-in, a description. This is the description that will appear in the tooltip if you hover over your button in Revit. Uh, the path to the assembly, which is the DLL file. So that's going to go in here. So under documents, Visual Studio projects, in your project name, in the bin folder, under debug, just so put it on there. Okay, okay, press enter there, and the also the full class name, which is the class name preceded by the namespace. So we have the namespace here, separated by period, and the class name. And every add-in needs a unique ID. So you can get that from a website such as GUID Generator. It's important that every add-in you create has a different ID, otherwise only the first one will load. Uh, and then you can put some information about yourself. Crisp. This part here, this vendor description, is it gets displayed in Revit if there is a problem loading your add-in, or if there's an unhandled exception. Good idea to put in a contact email address. So whoever you've given this add into, if there's an error, they know how to contact you to get help. Okay, that's it. Uh, and then we need to copy that file into the Revit add-ins directory. So if we go back to our project directory, that's the file we just created. Let's copy that. We're going to copy it into 
app data running Autodesk Revit add-ins 2016 or whichever version of Revit you're using. Uh, so we can get there if we type in app data percentage Autodesk Revit add-ins 2016 and that's that. Yeah, so that's everything we need to do to set up the project and get it loaded into Revit. So let's test it out. Hit F5 there to debug project. Okay, Revit started. Now let's just start just a blank project so we can see our tool in action. under the add-ins tab under external tools so there's our tool if we hover over it we'll see the description we added in the manifest click on it it's got the title and the message done let's close that off stop debugging and we're done so that's all you need to do pretty simple and thanks for watching